As a car nerd, for me, one of the most iconic cars is a Mitsubishi Evo. I'm definitely not alone in that, and it did feature in the video that I was talking about last week about Need for Speed Underground 2. It was my favourite on that game, and it was my favourite car as a kid. You know, I wasn't really... Supercars and that kind of thing weren't... I was, I was more looking at, like, a 300 SL and this, because a four-door saloon that's got that much power, all-wheel drive, wow. Probably why I have such a preference to sports saloons as well, because this is sort of the cultivation of a lot of my passion for it. Now the versions that are iconic for me is the Evo 8, 9 and 10 and I know the 9 and the 10 are heavily criticised by people at the time but I think for the fact that they are scarce now that they're out of production people do start to appreciate them more and the Evo 10 for me has always been one of the best looking cars that I think is out there it's just always been the price is a bit mental and even now that the fact that they aren't making any more of them the prices are sort of stagnating at still 30k and if you had dispensable income, that's the only point I'd get them. I don't think they'd be a very smart choice, but if you can take the styling and the looks for that and any other car that comes its way that has that kind of intention behind it, I think would be a great car. And the closest thing to it in a modern day is probably a Civic Type R, you know, in terms of the design and the nuttiness of it. But obviously the performance, it being all-wheel drive and its rally pedigree isn't there. The Evo has always been my preference to the Subaru. I, oh, I think just because it looked better and I don't know, I, I probably have to break that down a bit more because I don't, I don't properly understand why that was my preference, but it just was. You could use this as an everyday car and it still looked cool. Like you could have it on your drive and be proud of it. The aggressive bodywork that's on it as well as the wing, the performance, everything about it, I just thought was, it's everything that a car should be in its intention, you know, a little bit wacky, and the heart of it is its performance. And that's why it was so expensive new, because that's what you were paying for. Even just the grill on the Evo 10. Look how mental that is. You don't see that on any other car. The only the only comparison I can probably say is on a on a Julia Quadrifoglio, just the, the massive triangle, but then that's Alpha's image. It's just it's not the same in any way. That's the only comparison I can I can come up with at the minute. But with it being sort of like a that saloon look is sort of why I like the Octavia VRS as well. And I know that's not a saloon by definition because of the, the tailgate, but it, you know, it's that saloon shape with a wing on the back. They're just my kind of cars. The only problem is I wouldn't own one. <laughs> I don't think I would own one. I'd love to drive one, I'd love to see it, but especially at the time as well. It was a drug dealer's car, that's the kind of image you give off. It is this yobbo six-year-old that you want to revel in when you're driving it, and that's that's not what I'd want to put my money into. But it is a great, great era of, of cars. The Subarus and the Mitsubishi Evos at the time. That whole story is incredible, and if you haven't heard it, I, I can't do it justice. You'll have to check out someone else's video. But you definitely should if you haven't heard of this. But it would also give some explanation as to why Subaru Impressors are, are so popular as well. But yeah, I've not got much to say other than that. I just wanted to rave about it because it look at it. <laughs> that's, that's the only thing I can do. So, yeah. But, end of the day, don't listen to me. Do your own research because I drive a bloody Fiesta, not a rally car.